This is Tony Poulos reporting from Bangkok. I'm here today with Joseph Ladaban, who is the VP of Retail Credit and Collections for PLDT in the Philippines. Joseph, welcome. It's good to have you here. Joseph, firstly, I'd like to ask you a little bit about the background to PLDT. It's such a diversified business. Well, PLDT is an over eight year old company. It started out as a telephone company until about 10 years ago when the new management team came in. And we started to diversify ourselves from being purely a telco company into something that's more like a multimedia telco company. You have a very interesting definition of churn. Would you like to share that with me? <laughs> well, I've, I've uh, searched through a lot of uh, definitions of churn, but that was really something that really struck me. I call it the slap on the face definition, where it says that churn is a willful act of a customer to deliver the message that somebody else is doing better, uh, delivering better value other than you. How big a problem is churn in your market? And what steps are you taking to manage it? Because it used to be that PLDT was a monopoly for the longest time. Churn was not too much of a problem because uh, customers didn't have much of a choice. If uh, we were not delivering to their expectations, they didn't have uh, anybody else to go to. When the industry was the, uh, when the industry allowed for new competitors to come in sometime 15 years ago, that was when we realized that churn was slowly hitting us. Uh, people were moving to our competitors for better rates, for better packages, or for better quality of service, or for, for better customer service. Right now, we're seeing in the market that about every year we lose typically about 8 to 10 percent of our subscriber base to competition. So that kind of negates whatever uh, acquisition uh, efforts you have. So we have to make sure that there's more that are coming in. Uh, than those that are leaving us. I've heard you talk about the very difficult balancing act between churn and credit collection. What is that balancing act? It used to be that both collections and churn management were under my shop. And it was difficult because every time I tighten the screw on collection activities, it almost always results to more churn. Okay? If I become a bit lax in order to improve my churn numbers, almost always my collection numbers suffer. So it's a very dynamic yet complex uh, 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 balancing act. But as, I've, but as I've always told my the marketing folks as well as my management, collections can actually be a good tool in terms of controlling churn. Because there are two types of churn, the voluntary and involuntary ones. The involuntary ones is when I tell a customer, I don't like you anymore because you're not able to pay me what I delivered to you. But if I am able to make my collection efforts as regular as possible, such that I'm able to convince you that you got to pay me now, you, that prevents your balance from becoming un, uh, unreasonably huge, such that you don't have a choice but not to pay. So I, I tell them that if I'm able to do my job correctly in terms of ensuring that you pay regularly, I'm able to drive you farther and farther away from the uh, value of disconnection, the value of churn. What are the main challenges you face moving forward? For the company, I think the challenge now is to really see through this transition that's happening in the industry. It used to be that landline was the only bread and butter for PLDT until the wireless business came along. It's a good thing that we have this smart communications as our subsidiary, such that when the customer's preference moved from landline to wireline, where we are still in the market in terms of uh, being able to make ourselves relevant as a company. However, with the introduction of uh, these new social networking sites and all that, we have seen our revenues severely challenged. Uh, where it used to be that SMS was the killer application, now we're seeing that more and more these social networking sites are replacing the the SMS as a way of communications in the Philippines. Now, the beauty of it is that we still own the broadband line uh, market. Uh, so even if we're seeing a, a migration from SMS to the social networking sites, you cannot go into that without our broadband services. So that is a tribute to how our chairman has uh, 
seen the, the evolution of the market and it's a good thing that we're always one step ahead. Joseph Ladavan, thank you so much for being with us today. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you very much.